soul. Why do I need to be white? Why? Why does my skin have to be like paper? Like it is racist mm -hmm. against traditionally, na ka, kon Thai. This is what we do. Yeah. We are farmers. Traditionally, <laughs> the sun. There is a sun. Uh -huh. Of course, I am not gonna be the color of this wall. Pashanan, tham mai lao thung khai cream. Ti tham hai tua khao. You buy America. Chuk yang ti khai ku sun tanning lotion. Pawa kham mong wa kham mong pa wa bap. You just don't have a vacation. Now, like, you like tan. But when I'm in Thailand, I feel like, oh, it's dumb, dumb. Ah, the sun. I'm not going to wear a hat. So this pisses me off. I I feel like, why can't we embrace every single skin color there is, especially with Thailand being next to the equator? You as a person is a present to others. If they don't take your company or they don't understand you, then they don't deserve. The present that you're giving them, they don't deserve the kindness. They don't deserve the comedic effect that you might have on them. They might not deserve your loyalty as a friend. So don't care. I don't. I, mean, I really. I have. I really don't care. All the time, the people who's having problem with you on the internet, their life ain't better than yours. They don't mean crap. So I would suggest people to. Know yourself, work on yourself, love yourself. Life is a journey, always. Even for me, like some days when you wake up, you don't feel great about yourself, right? You know, when people talk about mental health, it's very stigmatized. Come up, ba. Hon kua ma, uy, may yap ay hati tapa, tawa kua kam ba ba. But that's so negative because just because I go to a therapist, which I have oh many times, I should not be stigmatized or I should not be felt. That it is something wrong because I'm taking care of myself. Once a year, there will be around 200 men who would go to the city, into this huge town, and they would disappear, and no one would know what happened. They were dressing up as women, but they're straight. คือมีลูกมีครอบครัวแต่คือเขาแค่มีความสุขกับการแค่แต่งหญิงแล้ว society บอกว่ามันผิดเขาก็เลยต้องแอบแอบแต่ว่าเขาไม่ได้ต้องการเป็นผู้หญิงนะเขามีครอบครัวแต่เขาแค่รู้สึกว่าเขาได้ปลดปล่อยอืมพี่โปอะไรแต่งหญิงเขาไปทำไมมันจะ because I can because I want to and because I don't care what you think so that's one of the other things because life is too short to care what people think and if you do certain things that makes you happy and it doesn't hurt anyone I'd say do it I just don't like and I have a problem with people telling other people how to live their lives because at the end of the day What are you doing? Why do you have the right to tell others how to live their lives? If they want to do this, do you have anything to tell them that you don't want to do it? The sheep won't understand the tiger. Because sheep is going to follow other sheep. But if you are the tiger, the sheep won't understand you. Don't let assimilation stop you from like, doing what you want to do. True. To like, represent. Like be the tiger, would you say? Yes, be the tiger. The Asian community being portrayed in certain media as you know either soft-spoken or quiet or um, the wallflower. You know, um, I mean, we don't have sexuality. When to think about it, name a famous, attractive Asian male actor. Think about it. Someone who's sexy in Hollywood. If you are a dancer and you don't know what type of dance you're passionate about yet, yeah. I would. My advice to you is to learn every type of dance and then see which one you like. Because if you don't try it, you don't know it. Nang yu thi ban hang wan ta bai lu dai Go out and try it and see. What life can offer you? What kind of books you like? What kind of magazines you want to read? What kind of person you want to be? You have to experiment and try it, but with a limit. How <laughs> about? <laughs> Hello, everyone. This is another interview series from the Source, Source of, of Success, Success YouTube channel, and today we are joined by the talented Thai drag queen, He Ban Ban. Sawadika. Thank you for so much for taking your time yeah. to join us today. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, and yeah. we look forward to interviewing you and hearing invaluable insights from Let's you. Let's do it. And happy birthday! Happy birthday, Special episode. Yes. <laughs> Woo. 
let's go. So with, please allow us to introduce ourselves. Mm -hmm. Hello, my name is Highlight Natamwonsin for Shaowong. I am from International Community School. And one of the things I'm passionate about is exploring through observing and participating in um, barrier-breaking debates and discussions to shed light and advocate for different global issues. Hello, my name is Nakamon Sengo. My nickname is Fafa, and I'm from St. Mark's International School. I'm more of an introvert, but I like learning new things about people and helping people through knowledge from my past experiences. So without further ado, let's get started with yeah. the questions. So our first questions would be, could you please introduce yourself yes. and give a brief overview of your life? Well, my name is Pan. Um, I am a drag artist. Um, when I am in drag, my name is Panjana Heels. Um, I am a business owner. I am a drag queen. I'm an entertainer. I'm an MC. I used to be a dancer, choreographer. Um, an overview of my life. Um, I think a lot of people would know me, I think back in Thailand when there was a TV program that was famous called The Face. And then I went on to compete as the first Thai contestant on Drag Race UK versus the world. So officially I'm the first Thai Rue girl. Hey. Yes. Wow, that's very impressive. Thank you. And you were also the judge on the Thai version right, of Drag Race. Right, the judge. Um, Co-host with Art Arya as um, the judges on Drag Race Thailand season one and two, yes. Um, I heard that you majored in fine arts at UCLA. I did. How was the experience there? It was great because um, UCLA is a conceptual art school. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think with you have, when, when you have the education in Thailand, mm -hmm. what they teach you are the techniques. Um, a lot of techniques. skill. And what I really appreciate going to UCLA is that they teach you conceptual how to think, how to think outside the box. You can question anything. So I think in many ways, um, the system doesn't teach you to just remember, but they teach you to question everything. And I think that's a great way because it teaches you how to think. Like creativity in general? Is that what you mean? Yes, but also when in certain schools, the, the schools that I was um, you know, growing up on, they teach you to remember mm -hmm. and regurgitate that information but they don't teach you how to think. Do you understand what I mean? So, sometimes it's great to be taught how to think for yourself, and I think that's what UCLA really does help. Yeah. I totally feel the relatability, mm -hmm. that sense, when you yeah. said that, like, the teacher just throws information mm -hmm. at you, and, like, um, enforces you to like regurgitate the information right. before the tests and quizzes mm -hmm. and then you suddenly just forget about it right. <laughs> literally yeah. after yeah. the test for a while yeah. you don't really put it into practice and right. in action like mm -hmm. enforce it yeah so my next question would be in your previous interviews you have described your journey battling with cyberbullying yeah. stigmatization yeah. ostracism so what advice would you like to give to those who are experiencing or encountering these negative actions you mean um when they're experiencing cyberbullying yes such the best advice i can give to someone is shut off your phone shut off your phone turn it on Airplane, airplane mode, cut off the Wi-Fi, by stay with your family, play with your dog, because none of it matters. Mm -hmm. And it affects you so much because most of the time the people who's having problem with you on the internet, their life ain't better than yours. Mm -hmm. They're just upset with the situation that they're having and they're projecting onto you, or you know, they don't mean crap. So I would suggest people to know yourself, work on yourself, love yourself. Life is a journey, always. Even for me, like some days when you wake up, you don't feel great about yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone would have those days. And it doesn't help when you go online and you read someone who doesn't know you say something about you. Mm -hmm. So I would say the most important thing in life is to be happy to the people that make you happy. Um, and really take care of yourself because it's dangerous out there with the internet. So have to be careful. Yeah. Yeah. I really think that's like this. Your statement, like your response to my question reminds me of like the TikTok video you made. Like if they don't pay your bills, uh -huh. like just don't care about it's them. It's true. And it takes, yes. a, it takes a long time to get there, mm -hmm. you know, but right. your skin has to become thicker when you go through life. And, you know, it, it's bound to happen that sometimes when you're on a weekday, 
sometimes certain things will affect you, but mm -hmm. do you do affirmations? You know what affirmations are? Like confirmation? I am confident. Right. You say that in front of the mirror every single day. And the more you say it, the more you'll believe it, the more you'll live it. So on certain days that you don't feel really great about your, yourself, you write on an A4 piece of paper, your name in the middle, and you write the things I love about myself, Ooh. the things I forgive myself for. And you keep doing that every single day. And the things you forgive yourself for, to, to one, every single day becomes less and less and less until you don't even remember it. So, yeah. um, that goes on to my next question. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on the importance of like mental well-being and physical well-being, especially in the it is, community? It is very important because one thing we're always concerned about is there is a hospital mm -hmm. when you're sick or when you're injured. But, you know, when people talk about mental health, it's very stigmatized. Come up with but that's so negative because just because I go to a therapist, which I have oh, many times, I should not be stigmatized or I should not be felt that it is something wrong because I'm taking care of myself. And so it's great to have these conversations. A lot of people, um, especially Pikun, talks about this beautifully. And I, he talks about, you know, mental health awareness. And I feel like it is something that we need to talk about because it is taking lives. But there's many suicide that, you know, um, involves mental health. And so I feel like it's good to shed a light on this topic and it's OK to ask for help. Yes, exactly. I truly agree with that. Mm. And like your response to like the, the previous response reminds me of like RuPaul's quote about like how I release all resentments mm. to you. And mm. that kind of like is a reflective, like rigorous reflective se mm. session with yourself. It yeah. kind of helps you learn more about what you could, I mean, let go of True. and live your life without caring about those like burdens. Indeed. Sort of. Yes. Agreed. Very much so. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So my question would be, how do you feel about like the criticisms of, from conservatives regarding like your, I mean, performances? Do I look like I care? I feel like I have a better time doing my nails, watching paint dry, um, laughing my way to the bank than I have about people who doesn't want to understand me. I feel like this is what this would be advice to people who are listening right now. Yes. You as a person is a present to others. If they don't take your company or they don't understand you, then they don't deserve the present that you're giving them. They don't deserve the kindness. They don't deserve the comedic effect that you might have on them. They might not deserve your loyalty as a friend. So don't care. I don't, I'm, I really, I have, I really don't care. I'm living in an amazing country with amazing food, with amazing people and, um, for people who don't understand me, they don't affect they don't affect me. So why should I let them affect me? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great mindset to have as well. Yeah. The I don't care about what they think about me mindset. Yes, it's true. I'm living it. Because if I cared what people think about me, I'll never leave the house. <laughs> ding ding. You can't do anything if you keep caring about what people say. Oh, back in the day, you know, when I was doing drag. Oh, but you're you're masculine. Why are you dressing up as a woman? Why not? Is it illegal? Is it wrong? If it makes me happy and it makes other people happy, don't. This reminds me of um, a quote earlier, maybe, yeah. that you mentioned about like how you don't want the audiences to laugh at you, but laugh alongside of you when you yeah. express your emotions through right. the art of drag. Yes. Yeah. No, I completely, I mean, I, I feel like laughing at someone means that you find them to be funny but not necessarily in a way that i'm being celebrated mm -hmm. so i think it's good when you laugh together instead of laughing at someone yeah like we collectively enjoy yes. the moment together yes. yes for sure speaking of drag hmm. do you know where it originated from where do you think it kind of came from this whole drag concept well i can't say for sure but you know historically drag has been rooted in the Shakespearean times um, when females weren't allowed to be on stage and so um, they the the characters of females are played by males and you know they would have to grind their breasts they would have to um, clay uh, the 
the male would have to I'm sorry finding the best นั่นคือหนัง Shakespeare and Love เมื่อละ jet lag อยู่คืออย่างนี้ what is going on is back in the day females cannot be on stage because you know สังคม sexist um, so men have to play the characters of the women so drag means dress in a role resembling a girl dress in a role as a girl D R A G หรือแบบใช่เป็น acronym หรือแบบถ้าเกิดกลับมามองที่สมัยรัชกาลที่6ด้วยซ้ำ we know when 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 um, women also weren't allowed to play certain roles so เป็นคล้ายๆอย่างนั้นว่าแบบ men dress up as women เล่นละครเล่นเป็น character I'd like you to clarify on like the differences between showgirls transvestites and drag I think it's very different it's a very big Culture that are different. I think. If you say that showgirl and drag are not very different, because it's under the same umbrella, but a lot of people would necessarily have in their mind what a showgirl is as someone who is, um, you know, has an aesthetic relating to beauty, and um, a lot of showgirls do live their lives as women, you know, as trans women. So, um, but a lot of drag, you know. They would live their life as um, not the character that they're dressed up to cross over into. For example, me, I dress up as a girl. I dress up as a girl. Drag has a lot of characters. But in the time, these days, drag can be anything. You know, there's drag kings, there's drag queens. There's it's limitless. Like bio queens, bio queens, femme queens. You know, but but, man, 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 wang, ma. มันก็คือ it's literally nowadays what drag means is แต่งข้ามข้ามอะไรบางอย่าง cross over into something yeah so it's basically a transvestite is similar to or is it synonymous to like cross dressers I think cross dressers there's a difference between cross dressers and drag queens and we'll break it down cross dressers uh, most most of the time cross dressers when they dress there is an audience that is less than drag Drag is to dance for the audience, to dance for the audience. The crossdresser is to dance for the happiness of them. Because so many people who are crossdressers, sometimes crossdressers, they would dress in the closet or in places where people don't see them as much. However, there's a sense that society is, you know, shaming them or, you know, there's a really interesting um, city. I forgot what name, but there's like 200 of like. Once a year, there will be around 200 men who would go to the city, into this huge town, and they would disappear, and no one would know what happened. They were dressing up as women. Is this real? This is real. Like for the whole time. For that in weekend, like about oh. have tea parties, <laughs> wow. but but they're straight. คือมีลูกมีครอบครัวแต่คือเขาแค่มีความสุขกับการแค่แต่งหญิงแล้ว society บอกว่ามันผิด He had to be able to do it. But he didn't have to be a girl. He had a girl, but he just felt that he had to be able to do it. I mean, I feel like it's a liberating outlet for them, right? It is, it is. But with drag, it's more in the open. It's more for, you know, as a job or as a performance. But I would say, like, cross-dressing, it's more for the problem of their own. And I would go to that city that you did. Wouldn't it be fun? I would love to go too. That sounds like a fun party. Wait, so like, do women actually like transform into men? So like, I don't. I think with that, with that, with that particular instance, females weren't allowed. Oh. Unfortunately, but I'm sure there are, you know, there's drag king parties as well, or you know, other types of parties. Yeah. Okay, that's very interesting. Yeah. So I would like to ask you about your journey in becoming a drag queen, as well as what inspired and motivated you to become who you are. I am inspired by strong women. I'm inspired by women who have a talent that is beyond them. You know, so I'm inspired by Wonder Woman. I am inspired by Mariah Carey, Lady Gaga, Barbara Streisand, Judy Garland. You know, a lot of women who are so powerful and but their lives are quite difficult in terms of they struggle with, you know, their relationships or substance abuse, but throughout it, they're survivors. And I'm 
I think drag for me is a tribute to what it means to be a woman. It's me celebrating the feminine quality or what it is that we call womanhood. Yeah. Wow. That's a good objective to have, like a goal to head towards, like yeah. aim towards, like you're paying tribute towards like the I celebrating. Do. I mean, think about it. If you are, if you are dressing up as a woman, you have to know what people think this word means. Oh yeah. You know, what does a woman mean? Why do I have to put on high heels? Why am I putting my waist in? Why am I hiding certain parts and highlighting certain parts? It is, it's an art form. And for us, I mean, at least for me, I appreciate what it means to be a woman. So that's your inspiration for drag. Would you say? It, it's many things is an inspiration to my drag, but that is for sure, you know, what it means to be a woman is up there. Um, I also like the fact that I don't give a crap about what society thinks of me. And that's when people tell me not to do something, I'm going to do it. So I think that's one of the reasons why back in the day, I, people are like, Thank you. I'm like, because I can, because I want to, and because I don't care what you think. So that's one of the other things. Because life's too short to care what people think. Mm -hmm. And if you do certain things that makes you happy and it doesn't hurt anyone, I'd say do it. I love how you have like that audacity and the courage yeah. to do so. Yeah. yeah. I think we need more of those people in Thailand. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like that corresponds to my next question, which sure. is like, you are one of the few Asian representatives in the international stage. Like, how was the experience? Well, Okay, you know how certain media, I wouldn't say which media, but certain media has painted a picture of, you know, the Asian community being portrayed in certain media as, you know, either soft-spoken or quiet or um, the wallflower, you know? Um, I mean, we don't have sexuality. When, to think about it, Name a famous, attractive, Asian male actor. Think about it. Someone who's sexy. In Hollywood. Like he's the butt of the joke. Oh. I, don't, I wouldn't say he's the butt of the joke, but there is a sense that he's we're, we're accessible. Okay. But if we're talking about someone who is... Um, Sexy, yeah. A lot of people would say, oh, Henry Golding from um, Crazy Rich Asians. But that's so... Yeah. If you study, you know, um, gender and, you know, gender politics, you feel I want to be so comfortable because we need to be seen as someone who's sexy as well. Like that's, in K-dramas? Right, you know, and I think that's really powerful because the more people see us as that, we feel collectively and I think one of the things that was really important for me is just to be so comfortable um, with who I am, with myself, um, because that was a journey. And so it's very important for me to go on be completely myself and speak my mind as well. So I didn't hide back what I said. I could have been quiet and polite, but that's, you know, there's a time and space for that. But when I think there's something wrong, I would say it. Like for, you've mentioned earlier, like about like how you think of yourself as like a soft-spoken, self-hating Asian. Right. Right. How do you learn to embrace? When we live in Thailand, the thing that I hate so much <clears throat> is the whitening cream. Oh yeah, like <laughs> Why do I need to be white? Why? Why does my skin have to be like paper? Like colorism entirely. It is racist mm -hmm. against traditionally Naka Kontai. This is what we do. Yeah. We are farmers. Traditionally, <laughs> the sun. There is a sun. Uh -huh. Of course I am not gonna be the color of this wall. Pashanan ทำไมเราถึงขายครีมที่ทำให้ตัวขาวอยู่ไปอเมริกาทุกอย่างที่ขายคือซันแทนนิ่งโลชั่นเพราะว่าเขามองว่าเขามองภาพว่าแบบอ
being next to the equator. So um, when we grow, when we grew up, a lot of the times we're taught that light color eyes คือสวยตาสีแบบอ่อนสีสวยต้องใส่คอนแทคเลนส์ So nowadays I don't wear contact lenses that are color because I love the color of my eye. I love the color, the fact that it's dark and it's okay. And it takes a long time for us to understand and reclaim those experiences to love the things that people, when they try to sell products, make us feel. You อ่านแมกกาซีนในแบบหลายๆอันนะ Buy this cream. Wear this color contact lens. Dye your hair. I mean, my hair is blonde, but I like it with dark roots. You know, I mean, it's at least if you do a certain thing, you have to know why you're doing it. How to come out? Yes. I think by like increasing visibility mm. in like magazines, commercials, mm. and all this media, this mm. also like increases uh, increases in understanding yes. in like uh, the society as well. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. What role does art play in like advocating for uh, minority communities in Thailand? Well, it is very important and it's very powerful. Like you know, many artists speak out against issues that need to be talked about, and so you know, whether the art is in a museum or the art is a performance or the art is in drag, as long as the artist has something to say that it's going to be powerful to change, to cause change, then yeah, art is some kind of a but is art really valued by certain governing structure in Thailand? In the status quo, no. Absolutely. Yes, so there's something to think about. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because if art is appreciated, it creates jobs. Why do you think about it? It's easy, easy. Street dance. Street dance is art. Street dance is a type of dance. Do we see street dancers in museums here in Thailand? Yeah. No, we don't. But when I was in Melbourne or when I was in LA, we see street art in museums. That creates job for street artists. Mm -hmm. Not here. Maybe we should have more of that. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Do you think drag is also like a form of art? Would you say? It really, it, 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 it for sure. Mm -hmm. It's you're using the body as um, as a canvas. You're painting on your face. You're performing, so that's a performance art. Your hair, it's like a sculpture. So you're just using your body as a canvas. How do you think like Thai drag differs from Western drag? Um, there's not that much similarity, I would say. Uh -huh. Drag is shaped by music, it's shaped by fashion, it's shaped by culture, it's shaped by history. So depending on who does the art, you know, there's one thing that's very important is that Thai people are very proud of who they are. Mm -hmm. So you see that in what we wear. You see that in the hairstyle that reflects, you know, a certain pride, I would mm -hmm. say. And that's what I think I felt like doing with my drag. Yeah. Has any, like, is there a particular part of your life that has influenced your drag or your style of art? Well, I think with my drag, it's always changing. It's always like life, I've always been, you know, continually to change and I didn't always understood a love fashion, but now I do. So it's so important and so exciting for me. But we go through what we love. It depends on the relationship, the time, the music, um, what's going on in the world. So it affects depending on where you're at at that stage in your life. Like sometimes people who like you are art like expects us to have this sort of signature concept that we uh -huh. have, but I feel like our art sort of fluctuates depending yeah. on our experiences and points in life. Very true. Yes. Very true. And sometimes that puts you in a box. Um, and I don't like being put in a box. So I've never really listened to what people want me to do. You know. How sometimes like some would, people might say that this is signature of you. You have to wear black for the rest of your life. On canvas, you. So I can't use any other color for the rest of my life. No, you should be able to do whatever you want to do. Express who you are. Yeah, but in a way that you don't negotiate. What you want, to you do it for yourself. Not you do it because it's gonna make you famous, or you do it because that person says you should do it. Nice. Yeah. 
So like when you were at RuPaul's, like on the on the world stage, mm -hmm. like RuPaul's Drag Race, mm -hmm. uh, it is oftentimes it could be like very pressurizing when it comes yeah. to like participating in yes. competitions. And you're especially like a very prominent figure here in Thailand, like one of the most famous drag queens ever. So how do you like deal with these pressures? I meditate. I meditate. I have to breathe. I have to do affirmations. But I prepare in a way that if you go into a competition and you feel so ready, yeah. my voice stress. <coughs> so it's like if you're doing an exam and you're so ready for the exam, you're not stressed. Mm -hmm. So before I went into the competition, I made sure I took 11 type of classes mm -hmm. um, so that when I go and compete, I was ready. Mm -hmm. And so that causes a lot less stress. So most you also assisted like some of the um your like yeah the My, contestants yeah, right yeah. there throughout My the competition yes. as well yeah yeah well was that do you think that was like one of the methods that you showcased you know the how your tie I don't think it's intentional, but I think you know, if you see a car that's broken down in the middle of the street, Thai people would always help each other and that's just who I am and I don't, I wasn't thinking about it, but I just don't want other people to look bad. Yes. We're in a competition together, but if I see an outfit that needs help, I, I want to help you because that's how I am. Oh, that's so nice of you. Nice. But I'm sure a lot of us are like that too. If you see yes. your friend struggling, you're like, come on, let me help you, you know? You're one of the best, like during the All Star seasons, um, mm. in which you got competed against Western drag queens. Um, do you mm. think they like block out the Asian contestants in there more, like, or um, were they like a bit unfair? Do you think? No, it's a competition. It's I think it's, you know, I mean, I I got booted out or I got um, eliminated, um, and it's a game, and it's okay. I'm not mad at anyone, and mm. it's fine. Yeah. How would you like describe your experience in representing Thailand at the world stage? I think it's one of my greatest honor. It's the thing that makes me so happy because now I get to do what I love all over the world. And, um, you know, I made sure that I not only showcase the essence of being Thai through what I wear, through, you know, my language, through, you know, who I am, but to be able to represent my country in a stage that is that big, you don't get to do that pretty often and I do it in a way that it's me and to let people know that Thai people when it comes to fashion when it comes to performance when it comes to lip sync when it comes to um, how we carry ourselves is appreciated and loved and that's very important to me how would you describe the interconnectedness if there if you think there is between like the drag and the LGBTQ community. Do you think there is like a correlation between between uh, drag and like LGBTQ um, that type of thing? LGBTQ what the community? Yes. Um, well, I think drag is a because drag is an art form. LGBTQ is the community and the person or the individual practices that art. So whatever that person you know sees that has to change with the world, they're going to yeah. use drag therefore their art or their voice as something to cause change mm -hmm. hmm. so it's a tool i think drag is a tool or a passion that we use to create change but as you've mentioned earlier we mm. don't it, it's not it's unnecessary for you to be like part of the lgbtq um, community to actually participate in right drag. you're right chai you know there's some drag queens who are heterosexual you know, I mean, I'm known, I know, I think Maddie, Maddie Metaphorphis is, um, is a, he's a straight, uh, straight heterosexual man, Mi Fan Wu Ying, that Hao Ka Hu Tang Ying, as an art. Yeah, as a form of art. Speaking of representation, you were also the ambassador of Taipei City. How is your experience of what? in doing Taipei City? Like, oh, is this a while ago? I think it's it's a it's a huge thing because number one, it's sponsored by the government, um, and it was great because we say hot, kid to come we say hot, right? You see a government of a city sponsoring a drag queen to represent them, and it makes me 
a little sad sometimes because I'm half Taiwanese and I'm half Thai. Ah, ตรงนี้นะไต้หวันนะตรงนี้ไทยประเทศนี้คือแต่งงานได้แล้ว LGBTQ คือแต่งงานได้แล้วก็ไอได้เป็นทูตที่นั่นก่อนทูตการท่องเที่ยว sponsored by the government and then I look over here and I'm like I can't get married in my own country. It's kind of sad, but you know I think we need to have these conversations. Because soft power is very important. I mean, look at Mili. Who, b a b m a m w a n g is m o t l a Who? That's how powerful it is. And I feel like that's something that I do too. Um, yeah. I mean, Mili profoundly impacts Thailand in so many. Ways. I'm so proud of her. I'm yes. so happy for her. And I love how outspoken she is. You know, she is what I love about the new generation. Yeah. Speaking of LGBTQ rights, um, what are your thoughts? Like, how do you see and envision the LGBTQ rights in Thailand? I'm hoping it's gonna be better soon. I've been waiting for quite a while for things to change. I'm gonna answer that question with a sigh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, that's an acceptable answer. I mean, it takes. It pisses me off. I mean. I've been very vocal about it. I have a my son against me um, when I, you know, participated in a protest for, you know, gay marriage, and I think it's bullcrap that we can't say certain things because we're going to be prosecuted for it. So yeah, it's a sigh. Yeah, I love like um, like in regards of like your the protest. Things. What are your thoughts on like how people are being outspoken and participating in these like, uh, yeah, protests that that will lead to like reclaiming their rights? Well, I think it's very important. I feel like if we look at history, there's many things that people get wrong. Yeah. สมัยก่อนผู้หญิงไม่สามารถโหวตด้วยซ้ำได้ suffrage women can't even vote. Um, Um, there's so many inequalities in the world that we looked throughout history that we're like, okay, there's something wrong. We need to be able to change it so that we can move into the future. And I think with you know the LGBTQ rights that's going on in Thailand, we need to do better. This is not good enough. I I, I feel like there's no protection laws for LGBTQ people in the workplace. There is, you know. Identification. I feel like that's one thing I'm very passionate about. Is I feel like you should be able to choose trans women, trans men should be able to choose what Mister or Miss หรือว่าแบบ non-binary ใน ID ในพาสปอร์ตมันมีหลายอย่างที่เรายังไม่ดีพอความรู้สึกแล้วเราควรที่จะเปลี่ยนแล้วเรา As we can see, like in the contemporary society, we have like polarized parties who have like different opinions on this subject. So hopefully, by protesting, by increasing understanding, by educating, we can see like um, an increase in reconciliation. True, and with you having this interview too, some people's gonna see it, and then they're gonna start talking about it, and hopefully, more people understand, and then maybe there's a change. Absolutely, yeah, you're doing your part, right? Yeah. Uh, I think Fafa has a question regarding. Oh yeah, the, about Cole that we talked about yeah. earlier. Can you yeah. like clarify more about, um, like, how does Cole intersect with drag in general? I don't. I think from my understanding, the similarities is that you, it's a performance, and then you put on a character. But with Cole, you cover your your head right with your face, like na h u p i k m o Yes. So you're performing with your body, but with drag, you ha- like most of the times you do makeup, and so. It is a performance art, I would say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. But with Korn, you play that character. Mm-hmm. The drag, you play a character that you envision. So mm-hmm. there's a part of you. Yeah. So like in drag, you kind of incorporate yourself, your identity, so. into that character as well. Yeah. So it can be a part of your identity, or it can be an escape, or it's a character that you want to be. But without the whole look. It's a mixture, a combination. Yes. Of mm-hmm. you and. Them. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's move on to uh, global issues. This is another interview topic that we would also like to discuss. Mm-hmm. So, what social issues are you passionate about, and how how are you contributing to like the advocacy of it? Um, what social issues? I I mean I I feel like it's very important. I feel like I'm very lucky that I get to have a roof over my head. I get to you know you know be able to live. 
um, in a way that is safe. And I feel like a lot of people don't have that choice. So um, whenever I have time, I, I, I love doing charity, um, whether it's to help um, you know, underprivileged kids or speaking about, you know, oh, another issue I'm very passionate about as well is um, speaking openly about HIV issues. Like sexually transmitted diseases? Yes, but also telling kids and teaching kids or other people about safety issues, mm -hmm. about um, sex education, because we don't talk about it, because we're not taught that in school. And so, you know, it can save lives. So I'm, you know, with Pulse Clinic, and we always give education about, you know, PrEP, PEP, you know, not to judge, but to educate. Yeah, it's very important for us to open, be open about these topics and right. bring taboo ta topics to the table yeah. and actually discuss about it so we can protect others True. through education. Yes. Yeah, so speaking of like Pulse Clinic, are mm. you like on tour to the Philippines very soon? I'm going to the Philippines very soon, I think in like a week or something. And, yeah, and I think I'm going to go to Singapore. It. Yeah, it's going to be really fun. So mm. you're like traveling the entire world? Yeah. I've been to a lot of places, yes. And I've been very fortunate, yeah. So do you hope to advocate through the art that you're doing, like as? Advocate, yes, very much so. It's, it, you know, um, I hope to use what I can with, you know, the way that when I perform, when I touch the microphone to say, um, number one, how proud I am as a Thai person, but also the things that I feel like could be better with the world. Yeah. Yeah. It's really admirable that you found something that you're passionate about. Yeah. What advice do you have for like students who don't really know what their passion is and they want to find their passion? For example, if you are a dancer and you don't know what type of dance you're passionate about yet, yeah. I would. My advice to you is to learn every type of dance and then see which one you like. Because if you don't try it, you don't know it. It's like, what do I like as a hobby? I would ride horses, um, I would go rock climbing. At least I try all these things and then I find out what I like. Go out and try it and see what life can offer you, what kind of books you like, what kind of magazines you want to read, what kind of person you want to be. You have to experiment and try it, but with a limit. <laughs> So at some point in life, exploration is more important than achievements, right? In order to achieve anything, you have to explore first. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So what are your thoughts on like Pride Month in Thailand here? Well, I think it's great that, you know, we have more visibility and companies are, you know, putting, they're slapping the um, rainbow logo onto their things. But what about the rest of the year? We gotta be, we gotta be, uh, we gotta have It's like rainbow washing. Yes, you, you understand what I mean, right? It's like, I'm like, oh my God, everything has a rainbow on. What happens to us the rest of the year? It's, don't do it just because it's, it's just a season. We, this is how we live. This is our lives. You can be proud of our community in December. You can be proud of our community in January. You can have a pride collection that's not only on Pride Month. That would make me so happy. But I think what I love about fashion brand, bang and leisure project, they do it with Tom of Lynn. They don't have to do Pride Month. But celebrate what it is. Celebrate queer culture. It's not necessary that you have to do it just a few days. The exploitation of pink dollars is right. still that like part. very part, common. Yes. Yeah. So we should recognize that we're able to celebrate without an extent or without like a time parameter. Yes. Because we look and we feel that it's You see brand like this, like the LGBT or like support it and it's been good for a year. Take it and take it and take it. It's good for you. It's good for you. It's good for you. Mm. Because, you know, some brands, you like, oh, they never like, support my god. So, yeah. It's just fake sometimes. Right, right. And like, do <laughs> all. Like, it's very obvious. It is very obvious. Yeah.
um, could you please like recommend um, if you have any like your favorite medias or books or novels about mm. supporting the LGBTQ community? Okay, if for you, I mean, just basics. I think everyone should watch Paris is Burning. The documentary is very powerful. Um, I love Pose. I love do Netflix Pose. Sense Eight Netflix. LGBTQ community um, Sense is one of the best things I've ever watched in my life. Um, books, I love Lisa Nichols. Positive thinking, it's gonna change your life. Lisa Nichols, it's gonna change your life. That book becomes like my Bible in how to live. It seriously, it would change your life. Lisa Nichols, um, live abundance or abundance life, abundance life. By art, love long, change your life. Do you ever want to write a book about the pride community or what you support one day? If that's yeah, you like you should write a book about. I think I'm okay at this point. I just need to sleep. <laughs> oh, oh, you know, but I'm okay. But yeah, maybe one day. You know, when I look back in my life, I'm retired, and that'll be fun. Oh, I saw your interview and your like future like book maybe like uh -huh. prospective book might yeah. be like meant to heal. Is that what, like, what? meant to heal? Meant to heal. Oh yeah, yeah, that, that interview. Yeah. Yeah. It will, it will be a good title. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So like, what what do you envision for the drag industry in like five years or ten years? I envision for us to be able to take over um, in ways that is more than now i'm so proud whenever you know my drag sisters get to do things outside of what people think we can do you know some of the girls that i work with are now about i'm just so proud of that you know some of us you know are business owners you know some of us are actresses mc people and it just makes me happy to see that we're taking up space because when you take up space it's so important yeah what do you hope to see become like normalized in the next couple of years? Like the normalization of the culture itself, or is there any, any I think, else? I think that that would be great. I mean, to nor when you say normalizing of culture, I think drag can be normalized, and it's it's becoming normalized because it's becoming more mainstream. And so, I think in a way that would be. แบบเหมือนกับที่แบบซีรีส์วายตอนนี้นอร์มัลไลซ์แล้วอ่ะเข้าใจมั้ยมันมันคนที่จะมีโปรเกรสชั่นจริงๆแบบแดรกมาก่
it's like our art อะไรอย่างเงี้ยว่า certain people shouldn't do it I just don't like and I have a problem with people telling other people how to live their lives because at the end of the day what are you doing ทําไมยูมีสิทธิ์ที่จะไปบอกคนอื่นให้ใช้ชีวิตยังไงถ้าสมมติเขาแบบอยากทําศิลปะนี้ยูมีสิทธิ์อะไรมาบอกเขาไหมห้ามทำอะ I just feel like that's that's just not helping the case so I feel like anyone can do whatever art they want to do Mm. As a prominent figure yourself, what are your thoughts on like celebrities raising donations for state fund services? Do you think it does more harm than good? Are you talking about like you know people running for money yeah, or people swimming across rivers? I mean, if they're raising it for good, why not? And they're using their fame as a platform as something to create conversation. I don't. I. Man, it's. บางคนบอกมันเป็นดราม่าเพราะแบบรู้สึกว่าแบบเออเดน why isn't you know the government doing it or you know why shouldn't they be responsible why shouldn't be responsible which I kind of agree but I also feel like at the end of the day they're they're helping people right yeah. so why are we complaining is this something that you kind of envision yourself doing one day or you mean to swim across or do something <laughs> like that to raise money for like hospitals or I have done many times um, in my past Do you mind sharing your these experiences with them? I mean, I sold old outfits before, and then I, you know, worked with um, COVID A Thailand as well. I raised money, and then I gave money to fund people for their food and medicine. I've done that before. I went to, um, I think, Mesot to help with underprivileged kids, families who, but you know, like เด็กที่แบบโดนขโมยไปแบบ into slavery. So I I did project with them before, but official ด้วย And then didn't so many actually. It's been a while, but I feel like it's important to try to help help out in any way you can. Yeah. So do you think child labor still exists? Oh yeah, for sure. And it's it's a, it's 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 still happening, and it's wrong, and it's it's horrible. And I feel like the most beautiful thing that a child needs is their childhood, mm-hmm. and some some of the kids are being, you know. They're not allowed to be kids, and it's very sad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd like to ask, like, take it back a little. So, how did you discover the like the art of whacking in general? The art of whacking. I was a dancer before, and then I saw my teacher, whose name is Princess Lockeru, um, and I kind of fell in love because it's an art that it's a queer dance, you know, and it's some it's a very liberating dance. Um, and so, yeah, mm-hmm. I I just fell into love. I fell in love with it because I was. Doing hip hop before, and then um, I never looked back. Yeah. I'd like to ask also about like you think. What are your thoughts on gender fluidity and the Kinsey scale? Like, would you like to? Add oh yeah, I completely agree scale? with the Kinsey scale. I mean, I don't necessarily agree a hundred percent because mm-hmm. I forgot what it says. But I feel like no one is a hundred percent heterosexual, and no one is a hundred percent. Homosexual. There's we're somewhere beyond that scale. So I do think that it's a great idea. Um, yeah, and I think certain times in our lives, some people might be more here or more here. So I d o n t a spectra. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much for yeah. joining us in today's yeah, interview. Pleasure. Yeah, you really you appreciate it. Advice for us. Oh yeah. Um, no. Keep doing what you're doing. I think it's great. I think there's. Many conversations are difficult to talk about, but I love that you're raising it, and yeah, keep killing it. What about like um, advice for those who want to pave their ways for like particular communities that they're trying to represent? I would path? say that if someone tries to make you quiet, you're doing something right. Yeah, okay. that's a great encouragement. Yeah, because most of the time, the sheep won't understand the tiger because sheep. Gonna follow other sheep, but if you're the tiger, the sheep won't understand you. Don't let assimilation stop you from like doing what you want to do. True. To like represent, like be True. the tiger. Would you say? Yes, be the tiger. That's actually a great analogy. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. So thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you.